Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Brenda, the HR lady. And today we're going to talk about being the 1%. And we're not talking about the 1% that's getting taxed out there. We're talking about the 1%, the 1% that is actually making stuff happen, making their dreams come true, making an HR infrastructure alive in their company and getting the people side of their business right. Because that is critical after all. That's why we're here. We're in HR. So people who are the 1%, they, let me tell you something, they, people, 1%ers, they think at a different level, okay? They really, really do. They think at a higher level. They don't allow the conversations of other people's doubts to get into their minds. And you know what? We're human and sometimes they do leech in, but you know what? The one percenters, they know how to fix that. They know how to get away from that. They know how to walk away from the sound. And I talk about this. I've got a book coming out. It's launching on June 5th. It's called uh, Best Practices in Human Resources, How to Claw Your Way from Wannabe to VP. And in it, I got from a friend of mine, <laughs> I'm going to say it here and I'm not going to bleep it out. It, it's that's the itty bitty shitty committee. That's what she calls it. <laughs> Sorry if you don't like swearing, but the moral with this, right? That little committee inside of your head is what dictates whether or not you are the one percent or you're looped into the ninety nine. Which would you rather be? Would you rather be the one percent that can walk with your head held high, knowing that you've accomplished something? that 99% of the other people haven't in this world. That's huge. That's huge bracking rights. And you should have that. Everybody, everybody on this planet, every single person on this planet has the capacity to be the 1%. The difference between the 99 and the one is that the one has chosen. And you know what? Some days the 1%, they're not that good at it. They need practice, right? They're going to fail. They're going to fall down. They're going to get up, they're going to dust themselves off, and they're going to keep moving forward. The 99% fall down and they stay there. They go back to playing their Nintendo or Pinterest or whatever it is that they're doing. Now, the 1%, they do play Nintendo and they do, you know, play on Pinterest. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying is that they just don't let defeat keep them suppressed. They don't let defeat keep them down. So in HR, how do you become the 1%? Well, there's a couple of things that you can do. First off, <coughs> excuse me, you need to read all the time and you need to apply what you're learning. Now, adult learning theory, that's how adults operate. Anything that comes to them has to be relevant. Otherwise, you're not going to retain it. So if you're reading stuff that, about the changes that's going on in, in HR legislature across the nation, in your state, in the multiple states that you're in, if you read every day, even if you just gleam at the headlines, you'll at least have an idea that stuff is shifting and stuff is changing. When you don't, you miss out. And that's how you get into trouble. Okay. Read and apply. Now, the other part about reading and applying <clears throat> is that if you really want to be great at HR, it's all about learning continuously and putting yourself in that mindset. Now, for years, years, there wasn't a lot of shift moving in HR. COVID hit, totally changed. And, and there was, I can be honest with you, there's about maybe about one and a half, two year ramp up <coughs> to HR laws that were starting to change or employment laws that were starting to change. And we started seeing trend, but then COVID, wham, hit, changed the game. Totally. Now we've got more stuff coming at us than we can actually keep it up on. And a lot of businesses, because their employees are spread out all throughout the United States now, look, you've got multiple challenges in trying to figure out what state is doing this and that and the other thing. It's continuous learning. That's how you stay up. Because here's the deal. I promise you this, is that your boss, although may not always necessarily buy into what you're trying to offer, but if you don't get ahead of some of those problems when it hits the fan and now they're looking at having to stroke very large check because of the fine, they're going to turn to you and say, why didn't we do this? That's how that works. That's how that works. Continuous learning. Develop your knowledge. Develop your skills. Skills as in negotiation, selling internally, right? 
continuous learning. Because it changes if you don't. If you don't change in this industry, and if you don't change in this field, you are going to be outdated <clears throat> and change for the better. All right. So another thing that one percenters do, okay, they read and apply. They are continuously learning. They also list their goals and they knock out their obstacles that will prevent them from reaching it. Now, it could be a goal. It could be a dream. It could be a vision. Whatever it is that you want to call it. One percenters know what it is that they want to go after. <clears throat> they write it down. They read it all the time. They're constantly checking in with that. Right? I'm going to, I'll show you something. This is my, this is my journal. This is, this is all of my business. I mean, I run three companies. <clears throat> I don't know if you know that or not, but I do. These, this is everything that's on my mind. It's my, it's business ideas, business plans. Here's what I have to do. My to do's. But I have my, I have what's important in here it, in all three companies, all three of them, everything that I need to, to be the 1% I keep in here. And trust me, it goes with me. When I sit, I have a community that I go to for, to be 1%, right? To reach that. And when I go to that community, that book comes with me. The only thing that goes in that book is my dealings with what I get out of the 1%, the, that 1%, that community that I'm involved with, and all the other things that are going through my mind that I have to do in order to reach that 1% and, just, and to maintain my level in that 1%. And all I'm doing is just troubleshooting and saying, okay, so this is what I want. I'm clear about it. I got it down. And then I start looking at it and going, what is in my way, including me? Because sometimes I have to get out of my own way to be successful. Same thing I did when I was uh, learning how to be an HR pro. I had to get out of my own way. I had conversations in my head. I had challenges coming at me. There were things that I was kicking down the road. That was horrible grammar, but you know what I mean. I was kicking stuff down the road. <coughs> the things that weren't fun for me, I didn't want to do them. But something that I learned, and I did it the other day, I did it yesterday, it was amazing. With this book release, I actually have knocked out my deadlines sooner than what I was supposed to. And I am so much far ahead that actually I've got something new that's going to be coming down in the next couple of months. And knowing me, I'm going to knock out all my obstacles and then that way I can bring it forward faster for you guys. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Sorry. I know I like to do that. If you've been watching my videos or listening to my podcast, I like to do these little danglers. <laughs> I'm not going to dangle you right now. All right. <clears throat> Read and apply. Continuously learn. List your goals. Knock out the obstacles. Okay. If you don't do that, that's the stuff that's going to hold you back. It's going to keep you in that 99%. Here's the last thing. You ready? Do the hard well. It takes 1% more of your effort to be the 1%. I know you're probably going to like do the math on that. Stop it, you analytical people. We're not going down there. <clears throat> do the hard well. It only takes 1% more effort for you to be the 1%. And, you know, if you bounce back between 1% and 99% and then 1% and then 99%, you know what? Take one more percent and see how longer you can stay in the 1% before you fall backwards into the 99%. <clears throat> Look, there's something broken in every company, right? There's something that's going to pop you back into what feels the 99%. The difference between a 99% and a 1% is the 1% stands up and gets back into the 1% game. And it's not hard to do. All it is is a mindset shift. That's it. You feel yourself falling back. You feel like stuff you just want to kick down the road. That's 99% thinking. To get out of that 99%, just go, oh, all right, I'll get it done. I'm going to be in the 1%. And even when you say it out loud, you're calling it into an existence. And it makes things happen. So here's the question. Are you the 99% or are you the 1%? And if you answer yes to the 99%, what's the 1% that you can do That'll put you in a 1% mindset. 
We'll see you guys later.